that has you in a center. You've got the idea for a product or a uh, market, but you're immediately faced with a problem. Okay? We've identified uh, attributes in first-rate customers, right? We did that a little earlier. Okay, now what I want you to do is name names. Name the names of first-rate uh, customers in the United States. People that if you sold them, if you got an order from them, you said, ah, I'm on my way. Uh, this is going to work out. All my hopes and dreams are coming true. Name a customer that you would sell to. First um, Borders. Borders, good. Store, yes. Barneys. Barneys. Clothing, yes. Uh, Procter & Gamble. Procter & Gamble, very good. Urban Outfitters. Urban Outfitters. Procter & Gamble, would you be selling them toothpaste or ingredients in toothpaste? You sell them so the ingredients and to, all right, good. Okay. 10,000 villages. 10,000 villages. Now they're an import. Yeah, that's right, yeah. So you want to sell to that? Well, that, that happens too, because everything happens in life. Mm -hmm. Importers buy from importers too. Uh, uh, La Tienda, the uh, uh, South American store, retail store, uh, they buy, they, they go down in South America, buy cool things, bring it back, but they buy from importers, they buy from American suppliers, everybody does everything. So that's possible, that's possible. Uh, it all depends on who your customers are. If they are your customers, then great. Yes? Uh, Target. It's pronounced Target now. Yes. Very <laughs> good. First rate, first rate, yes. Starbucks. Very good. Um, yeah, probably uh, somewhere like Target or uh, Pier One. Okay, good. Good, good. Okay. Barney's and Target. Uh, Walmart and Saks Fifth Avenue. All right. Safeway, Puget Consumer Co op. Future Consumer Co-op is the local correct version of Whole Foods, right? Okay. So, uh, <laughs> what else do we have? Mighty Mouse Toys down in the Pioneer Square and Toys R Us. You see something, a little thing going on there? Uh, Smith and & Hawkins and Home Depot. De uh, Medici Ming and Office Depot. So what, what's happening here? I am juxtaposing uh, one market, two different markets, aren't I? Okay, what's the difference between the two? What's the, the, the selling proposition of Walmart? Inexpensive. Inexpensive. A lot of it. And a lot of it, and that's how it's inexpensive. They're buying in volume. We sell for less. They compete on price. It's always there too. It's always there. It's always Yes, uh, the planograms are the same everywhere. They line up exactly what you need. When you go for sale, it's going to be there. Unlike Kmart, it's always they've been there. Walmart's got it done right. That's why they're the biggest import in the world. They're the number one in container traffic in the world. They're uh, done importing uh, from Asia what they will sell in the fourth quarter by the end of the second quarter because there's not enough lift capacity in the docks in Asia to deliver fourth quarter goods in fourth quarter. Can't do it. So that's how big they are. Huge. Okay. So uh, we compete on price. They're painted across every store. We sell for less always. Okay. When you're going into Safeway or any of these stores at that level, you know what you're doing. You're going in to get the low price. Okay. Uh, if you go into Safeway for chicken, it's going to be whatever. 39 cents a pound or something, uh, and you go into Puget Consumer Co-op, PCC, it's seven bucks a pound for a chicken, all right? But there's a difference between the two chickens, right? One's free range, which is very expensive, and one is not. It was born, raised, and died in a box, two boxes, as a matter of fact. Uh, you, you take a, a, a PCC chicken, you eat the chicken, then you throw the bones in water and boil it, you get a nice broth. You take a Safeway chicken, you boil it, you get hot water. Right? Difference in food value there, right? Okay. So, uh, uh, so we got a difference here, competing on price. Uh, generally, people think in terms of, especially if you're raised in America, sell to Walmart, 
go for the big mass merchandisers. That's where the money is. That attitude prevails. There's a little problem with that. What if you sell to Walmart? What if you get an order? Uh, they sell for less. They're going to buy a, a big quantity from you. And that's what you want, right? You, that's the attraction. Get a $100,000 order from Walmart. Okay, so $100,000 order from Walmart would cover the supplier's minimum, whatever that happens to be. Uh, uh, sure, certainly any, any supplier we see is get a hundred thousand dollars from you. Wow, that's great. Now they feed on price. So what is uh, what's your margin going to be? Your gross margin selling to a Walmart? Um, I've heard two or three percent. Let's say you get five percent. All right, so five percent, you're going to make five thousand bucks selling to Walmart. That's pretty cool. Twenty hours of work, two hundred fifty bucks an hour. Yeah, and then we'll continue this and we'll keep selling. We'll make a lot of money. Well, but they're making a little problem here. You've got a hundred thousand dollar order. What you're making $5,000 on, what do the goods cost you? What's the cost of goods here? Well, it's $95,000, isn't it? So you've got to come up with a $95,000 to pay for the goods that you will sell to Walmart for $100,000, right? Yes, okay. Where are you going to get the $95,000? Sell it to Target Sales. Sell it to Target? No, no, no. Well, what are you going to sell to Target? Target, Walmart, whoever it is, Dr. Safeway, Toys R Us, it doesn't matter. You're going to have to come up with $95,000 to buy the goods from the suppliers overseas to get a $100,000 sale from Walmart. Where are you going to get the $95,000? Take a loan out from a bank. They won't give it to you. They do not finance this kind of stuff. It just, that will not happen. Takes all the risk yourself. I mean, if you, have You're, you, have all, if you have all the cash, you can do it, right? But then it's like if they don't sell them or whatever. No, no, no. Under the Uniform Commercial Code, it's one right. way. They cannot send them back. You definitely take money. It's your money. You put it with your own money. SBA will not finance this kind of deal. They have their parameters, and this will not fall inside that deal. Uh, the supplier will not finance you. Walmart will not finance you. I know of no other way besides putting down your own 95000 bucks. Do you have 95000 bucks to put down? He does, but you don't, do you? Okay, so that ain't going to work. I got five bucks right You got it. <laughs> But you just blew half of it. You can blow down a coffee on your way out the door. So, uh, uh, unless you wait until tomorrow morning, which you'll get it free in McDonald's. Uh, it's a small latte. So, um, hang on a second. 95000 bucks. What are CDs paying right now? 4%? Uh, no, it's 2.17. Really CDs? 2.1? Yeah. Oh, well, I mean, it depends how big it is. And if you get it from, like, you know, Bank of America. Okay. It's pretty low, but if you can get it from $95,000, you can probably get it. Or maybe maybe what I want. Okay, so, yeah, okay. so why would you take all the risk of selling to a Walmart when a CD back by Uncle Sam is going to get you more money, or small, a little less, but safer? Okay. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, let's say to get over this problem, you've got a rich uncle who is looking for a business loss to write off. All that. So he lends you the ninety-five thousand. This is lost to write off. Okay. So he lends you the ninety-five thousand bucks. So you got that problem covered. Now you got the ninety-five thousand dollars. You buy the goods. All right. Uh, now what does Walmart do? They compete on price. We sell for less. What do they sell for less? That which you can get anywhere else. That's comparative. We sell for less. That which you can find anywhere else. 